Let us read a passage from the Word of God found in Isaiah 11, 1 through 9. Then a shoot will spring from the stem of Jesse, and a branch from his roots will bear fruit. The spirit of the Lord will rest on him, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and strength, the spirit of knowledge and fear of the Lord. And he will delight in the fear of the Lord, and he will not judge by what his eyes see, nor by what his ears may hear. But with righteousness he will judge the poor, and decide with fairness for the afflicted of the earth. And he will strike the earth with the rod of his mouth, and with the breath of his lips he will slay the wicked. Also righteousness will be a belt about his loins, and faithfulness the belt about his waist. And the wolf will dwell with the lamb, and the leopard will lie down with the young goat, and the calf and the young lion and the fatling together, and the little boy will lead them. Also the cow and the bear will graze, their young will lie down together, and the lion will eat straw like an ox. The nursing child will play by the hole of the cobra, and the weaned child will put his hand on the viper's den. They will not hurt or destroy in all my holy mountain, for the earth will be full of the knowledge of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Peace. It's a very interesting word and a very interesting concept. We hear it written about, spoken of, sung of, especially this time of year. The hymn we just sung, I Heard the Bells on Christmas Day, was written in 1864 by Henry W. Longfellow during the American Civil War. And we see this setting clearly in this hymn. Let's read over it one more time. I heard the bells on Christmas Day, their old familiar carols play, and wild and sweet the words repeat, of peace on earth, good will to men. And thought how, as the day had come, the belfries of all Christendom had rolled along the unbroken song of peace on earth, good will to men. Till ringing, singing on its way, the world revolved from night to day. A chant, a voice of chime, a chant sublime, of peace on earth, good will to men. And in despair I bowed my head. There is no peace on earth, I said. For hate is strong and mocks the song of peace on earth, goodwill to men. As the writer of this hymn points out, it is very hard to find peace on our earth. There are actually two more stanzas that are usually not included in the hymnals that really reflect the time he wrote it. Then from each black accursed mouth, the cannon thundered in the south, and with the sound the carols drowned of peace on earth, goodwill to men. It was as if, as if an earthquake rent the hearthstones of a continent and made forlorn the households born of peace on earth, goodwill to men. We might not live during the Civil War like this author did, but can't we relate? I mean, do we even need to name off the list of the nasty effects that the absence of peace or the brokenness in our world has created? Let's say war, crime, violence, oppression, persecution, Racism, sexism, power struggles, genocide, hate, homelessness, murder, and on and on and on and on. And we see these broken results play out in our daily lives. Just at my university, I see brokenness in the family. When a daughter doesn't know whether she can go home for Christmas break because her father married the woman he cheated on her mother with. Brokenness in the home. When a child can't shake the emotional trauma, caused by an adult who decided to abuse them when they were younger. Brokenness in the economy. When hardworking people are laid off and given no other chance for work to provide for their basic necessities. We live in a broken world. A world so bound up in its brokenness that we literally cannot imagine it any other way. This sort of broken world, one does, that does not seem to have peace anywhere, is the same sort of world that Isaiah preached in. Israel was broken. Israel did not have true peace. Israel needed something to change and quick. And like us, Israel had a whole list of ailments too. They had just been through a whole line of bad kings that did not follow the commands of God. Kings like Ahaz. Much of the nation of Israel did not worship the true God as their ancestors had passed down to them. Israel had been invaded by Assyria and only a remnant of the originally countless nation was left. And they had trouble with justice in their judicial system too, much like we do today. And on 
and on and on and on. This prophecy is talking to the remnant that is left after the Assyrian invasion. They had been through some really hard times. The end of chapter 10 in Isaiah paints this picture for us. We see this great force that has just been decimated by the Lord Almighty. All that is left is mere burnt stumps. Only death remains. The, yet in chapter 11, our passage shows us that somehow or the other, out of this death, out of this decay, out of this hopelessness of the previous chapter, God tells Isaiah that a shoot will come out of a stump, that life will come from death. A tiny, little green piece of life in a barren wasteland of stumps. It almost makes me want to say, so what? I mean, what is one single green stem going to do if a whole forest of strong, sturdy trees couldn't stand up? If the trees couldn't survive, how in the world is a little green shoot going to survive? What is this stem going to do? In their setting, this stem was supposed to be a king of the line of David. A good king, finally. And our text describes all the attributes this king was to have to be such a messianic king. Our passage says that a shoot will spring from the stem of Jesse. A branch from Jesse's roots will bear fruit. And the Spirit of the Lord will rest on him. Then it describes three different sets of traits that this shoot, this man, will have. Traits that will allow him to be the king that follows after God's own heart. Spirits are traits of wisdom and understanding, of counsel and strength, of knowledge and fear of the Lord. And to top off this list of God-pleasing characteristics, he will also delight in the fear of the Lord and will judge fairly, finally fairly, with righteousness and fairness, with God's own measure, not like we do with what our eyes see or what our ears can hear. And he will be such a man of God that righteousness and faithfulness are practically belts about his waist for how much he displays these traits. So what could this little shoot do? This little stem is going to change history forevermore. This is Isaiah's message to the downtrodden, broken-hearted, walled-up, bound people. God is sending someone to bring true peace. And when this Messiah, this God-fearing king, comes to Israel, this passage says true peace will come as well. <laughs>